number 10, the average human. Before comparing things to humanity or the Earth itself, it's important to list out just what the average heights and weights are for humans as a whole. In terms of the average male, scaled across the whole planet, their height is only 5'6", with a weight that can fluctuate between 130 and 150 pounds, depending on their body type. Now, obviously, this can change drastically depending on their region of birth, their genetics in regards to their parents, and more. The United States, for example, has loads of people, both men and women, that are much taller than 5'6", and can even reach over seven feet at times. Just as important, there are many people who are obese and thus go over the 150 pound marker. But on average, 5'6", 140 pounds is the average size of the human race, which may seem like an impressive number, but in truth, it's not. Number nine, giraffe. In terms of pure height, the giraffe is the tallest creature on the earth right now as well as one of the most recognizable and arguably most popular creatures on the planet. The reason for the giraffe's massive height is due to its trademark neck, as well as its long legs. It's been long believed that the giraffe at one time was much shorter and didn't have such a long neck. But then, by evolution, the growths of those body parts occurred so that they could reach the food that was in the trees. This was likely because where they live in Africa is full of animals that eat off the ground by the grass, which left the trees ripe for the picking, so to speak. But how tall are they exactly? That depends on the species. Some of them, though, can get up their heights to 20 feet, with 6 feet belonging to their neck most times. That means that technically a giraffe is over 4 times as big as the average human. Number 8. Humongous Fungus If you wish to see a creature that truly engulfs the space it lives in, you would need to go to Oregon in the United States, in a place called the Mallor National Forest. There lives what is technically the largest living organism in the world today, a fungus called Armillaria osteae. If you're curious how this is the largest living organism on Earth, you need to not think about the height or width or even length, but rather the area it covers because the roots of this fungus currently covers over 2,385 acres of land within the National Forest. How is that possible? This is due to how the roots of the plant work. It starts underground, and then it leeches off the life of other plants, mainly trees. It'll latch itself onto the tree roots and suck the nutrients and other valuable items from it, which kills the trees themselves, as that's how themselves get fed and watered, and it allows the roots to grow in the process. But think about that on a growth level. Humanity occupies a small space on their own and needs cities and communities in order to fill up the area. Yet here, this one fungus covers up acres all on its own. Number 7. Mosquito Without a doubt, the mosquito is one of the most annoying insects in the world and one that humans wish would go extinct for various reasons. Due to that annoyance, most of humanity does not realize that the mosquito is the most dangerous insect in the world right now in many ways, despite it being one of the smallest creatures around. The reason for this is simple. While it's true that mosquitoes bite humans and drain their blood, they can also infect them with a whole host of diseases as mosquitoes are perfect carriers for these diseases by their ability to siphon off blood from victims. One such case of this happening was the West Nile virus scare that had the disease pass from bug to bug and then human to human. To further show how dangerous they are, it's estimated that 700,000 people die per year by the diseases transmitted from mosquitoes, which can range from West Nile virus to malaria, yellow fever, chikungunya, dengue fever, filariasis, zika, and more. As for their size, they're generally about 0.15 inches in length, which is why they can sneak up on you without you ever knowing, bite you, and then move on scot-free. So despite them being so small, they are one of the deadliest creatures in the world. Number 6. African Bush Elephant If you wish to know about the weight of a land animal in regards to the biggest around, that would be the African Bush Elephant. It is also considered the largest living terrestrial land animal on Earth. Like many elephants, the African bush elephant is known for its girth. Its height up to its shoulders can reach up to 13 feet, over double a human's height. Its length can be up to 24 feet, which is over four times a human if you lay them down. And when you combine that, that allows this elephant to weigh over 10 tons, making them an astounding 133 times heavier than a single human on average. This size has allowed it many boons over its life, because once they're fully grown, especially with their tusks that can reach many feet in length, 
They have no natural predators that can hurt them. The only exception, of course, is man, who will kill the elephants for their ivory tusks, which makes it all the more ironic because humans are clearly much smaller and thinner than these elephants, and yet they're able to kill them in such numbers that many elephant species are extinct or near extinction. Number 5. Green Anaconda Snakes as a whole are not unlike humans in that they come in a variety of sizes both lengthwise and girthwise. But the one many should fear is the green anaconda, which is the longest snake in the world today. The average size of the snake can vary at times. It'll be between 18 to 20 feet, but at its max, this anaconda can be up to 27 feet long and their weight can be over 400 pounds at times. So they have size and girth, which makes for a very deadly combination when stalking prey. And should they feel the need, they have the power to kill a human with plenty of strength to spare. What's more, they live in rivers and swamps in South America, including the Amazon. Thus, if you're careful, you'll never have to see one. Furthermore, they aren't known to eat humans at all. What's intimidating about them, though, is that green anacondas are ambush predators. They wait for prey to come to them and then strike, usually by wrapping their bodies around the prey and squeezing them to death. Number 4. Blue Whale when it comes to the biggest animal currently on Earth, the title would go to the blue whale. It shouldn't be too much of a shock that the whale is the biggest animal measured on Earth today, as whales are constantly monitored by humans and various species of them are known to be quite large. The blue whale species in particular completely dwarfs all other whales in the world today. The largest one ever recorded was around 112 feet. The average for this whale species is about 100 feet. So this was big, even by their standards. Yet despite its massive size, it's a creature that only eats really small fish, and they're incredibly kind to people and most other animals. These and many other kinds of whales have been known to let humans swim with them, and some whales have even saved human lives. Should you get the opportunity to see one up close, you'll be able to tell just how massive they are compared to you. Number 3. Microorganisms if you were to look around you right now, you would see what is meant to be seen. Mainly, you'll see the things that are clearly visible to your naked eye, which also means that you're not seeing a whole world of creatures that are there all the time and all around you, but you just don't realize it. This is the world of microorganisms. Depending on your beliefs, it is from these single or multi-celled organisms that we are born. Evolution over the course of billions of years allowed these cells to grow and advance until they eventually constructed all life on Earth by plants and animals, and their discovery helped change how we view life as a whole. The possible existence of unseen microbial life was suspected from ancient times, such as in Jain scriptures from the 6th century BC, India, and the 1st century BC book on agriculture by Marcus Tentrius Faro. The scientific study of microorganisms began with their observation under the microscope in the 1670s by Antony van Leeuwenhoek. In the 1850s, Louis Pasteur found that microorganisms caused food spoilage, debunking the theory of spontaneous generation. In the 1880s, Robert Koch discovered that microorganisms caused the diseases tuberculosis, chloria, and anthrax. It would be almost incalculable to try and determine how many microorganisms exist in the world, as there are many we likely don't know about. But in terms of the human body, you have trillions living inside you, even outnumbering your cells 10 to 1. Number 2. Earth Looking at things in a different scope, it's sometimes easy to forget that we are just a small dot on a planet that we call Earth, a planet that is 7,900 plus feet in diameter and occupy lengthwise from shoulder to shoulder about two feet. As of 2018, the population of Earth was over 7.5 billion. And yet, even with all of that, there are many dead zones in which people cannot or don't inhabit, including the oceans. All told, the Earth is massive and we're just living on the top layer of it. It would be very hard to figure out how many people could live on Earth in order to fill up every inch, but it would be much, much more than we have right now, especially since the land on Earth only covers about 29% of its mass. Number 1. The Known Universe It's important to know one such thing about the universe, its size. 
which is actually one of the hardest things to do, mainly because we can't see the end of the universe for one reason or another. That's why the phrases the known universe and the observable universe are thrown around so much in science and space talks because humanity truly can't get a grasp on how big the universe is at the present moment. It's not due to lack of technology though, but rather a case of the universe being so vast and expansive that it's hard to quantify. What's more, the universe is still growing, which means even if we could measure it, that measurement wouldn't be accurate for very long. Many feel that the universe is growing at a steady rate due to the Big Bang energy that is still prevalent in the universe, or even because of dark energy. But if you're looking for a concrete number, the observable universe is estimated to be about 93 billion light years across. Does that make you feel small? Because it honestly should, especially because that's just one part of the universe as a whole. In terms of true size, the universe is technically infinite. Number 12, wolf spider. Wolf spiders are one of the largest species of spider and can grow up to four inches. They are quite unusual in many ways and do not spin webs unlike most species. Instead, they like to wait inside burrows to hunt their prey. They can jump to great heights and run very fast, hunting more like a mammal than an insect hence their name. The thing that makes them truly creepy though is the way they look after their young. They like to build a silken pouch called a spinneret around their abdomen. They carry their young with them till they grow to a decent size. A close-up view of one of these spiders often reveals a swarming nest of smaller spiders which is super, super creepy. Wolf mothers can hold up to 100 babies at once. If you freak out when you see one, be careful about trying to squash it. These spiders are incredibly fast and a poorly timed hit will often just result in an explosion of smaller spiders, which will climb all over you. Number 11, the giant weta bug. Cruelly named the god of ugly things, this New Zealand native has a reputation as one of the world's creepiest bugs. There are around 70 different species of weta, but the giant weta is one of the world's biggest insects. The weta are very ancient, a product of time when the world's atmosphere was more oxygen rich, which caused the bugs to get a lot larger. These armored cricket-like creatures get up to huge sizes and when fully grown are the size of a gerbil. They also weigh three times more than a mouse or a small bird. They use their chunkiness to throw their weight around when they get into fights. These huge bugs have giant mandibles and they get into scraps fairly often over female insects. Typically, the loser's legs are ripped off by the victor. Nonetheless, they are reasonably friendly towards people, although people do not always appreciate that. Number 10, the giant silkworm assassin caterpillar. These strange and creepy caterpillars from Brazil come in many colors and can be identified by their Christmas tree-like appearance covered in clusters of tiny spines. This slow-moving alien-like creature doesn't look that dangerous, but a gentle brush against its larva spines can kill an adult human. It's the world's deadliest caterpillar. Their larva secretes a toxin which can cause a gangrene-like effect in humans. Their tiny spines are razor sharp and can easily pierce human skin. The toxin prevents the blood from clotting, which can cause catastrophic bleeding. When the venom reaches the brain, it often causes massive hemorrhaging and eventually death. They do serve a purpose, however. They are so dangerous that trees they live in remain untouched by other animals who would normally destroy them. Some refer to them as the deadly guardians of the rainforest. Number nine, the giant Amazonian centipede Many species of giant centipede live in the Amazon basin. Attracted to the warmth and moisture, centipedes can grow up to huge sizes here. The giant Amazonian centipede is the worst and most disturbing of them all. It doesn't just look gross, it is also carnivorous and likes to eat the flesh of small mammals. With 46 legs, this bug can reach up to 35 centimeters, about the length of a grown man's arm. They coil their extremely long bodies around their prey and administer their poisonous bite. Their gross claw-like legs are not just for walking on. They use them to grip hold of the creatures which they consume. These bugs move incredibly fast and are surprisingly agile hunters. They are big enough to eat mice and frogs and they've been filmed eating small snakes. These bugs can strip the flesh from a small mammal within an hour. They also like to eat their own skin, so that's nice. If you do venture into the rainforest, beware. They like to slip into backpacks and often hitch rides with people who travel there. Number eight, the Emperor Scorpion. The Emperor Scorpion is the world's largest scorpion. These massive scorpions come from West Africa and are amazing survivors. And while they only live six to eight years in the wild, they have been known to live up to 25 years in captivity. Armed with huge crushing claws and a venomous stinger, the emperor scorpion goes into a special aggressive stance when provoked. Its venom causes paralysis, 
perfect for disabling its larger prey, mice and lizards. In humans, its sting can cause a painful burning sensation. Its claws are powerful, strong enough to rip apart the armor of other scorpions. These guys like to fight each other, but they also like to romantically hold hands. Scorpions are known for being highly diligent mothers. Female emperors can carry up to 30 little baby scorpions on their backs. These babies are milky white and look like little ghosts. Perhaps unsurprisingly, it is unwise to bother a mother scorpion protecting her baby youngsters, not just because you will get stung, but because their brood will attack you as well. Number seven, Brahmin Moth Caterpillar. Probably one of the most eccentric looking creatures on the planet, the Brahmin Moth Caterpillar has an amazing alien-like antenna and a colorful body. Its five curly black spindles protrude strangely in all directions and look like demonic feelers. These little guys are actually pretty rare and not much is known about them. There is some debate over what this bug's crazy spindles are even for. Some believe they are for defense or to feel around or maybe they just like to show off. These insects are typically found in Asia, quietly feeding off bitter plants and hedgerows. They look more like they belong in a heavy metal rock band. They also make amazing moths when they finally transform, known for their magnificent, stripy, tiger-like patterns. Number six, botflies. Botflies initially look like cute little fuzzy bumblebees, but the way they laid their eggs is absolutely horrifying. These little insects only live nine to 12 days, and in that time, their only goal is to eat and lay their eggs inside of an unsuspecting animal. Some like to infest the guts of the creature they live in, but most, including the version that is attracted to humans, predominantly live under the skin. Unlike other insects, which lay their larvae inside of dead bodies, the botfly lays its eggs in the skin of living things, including humans. These larvae stay in the bodies in their host for about three months, during which time they eat away at their flesh of the animal or person they live inside. When the larva is fully mature, it bursts through the host's skin in a cluster, like something from a horror movie. These massive maggots reach quite large sizes, and although they will not kill you, they often make enormous gaping wounds in people's skin. They are most commonly found across South America. There are many stories of people who have traveled to Latin America on vacation and come back with strange lumps moving under their skin. Number five, Saddleback Caterpillar. Perhaps one of the strangest creatures in all creation, the Saddleback Caterpillar resembles a sea anemone with a bright green horse's saddle on its back. These weird creatures spend most of their time in sunny Mexico and have started to migrate to the US. Their tiny faces resemble a black skull with orange tufts coming out of it. That's pretty badass. If this wasn't weird enough, they often look even stranger due to the creatures that attack them. Unfortunately for the caterpillar, they are popular with the braconid wasps who like to attach their parasitic larvae to the creature's back. The saddleback is not typically dangerous, but it does have several methods of irritating you. It likes to charge at its enemies with its strange furry horns, releasing its tiny hairs as it does so. These hairs contain venom, which is poisonous to humans and can cause nausea and rashes on the skin. The hairs must be removed immediately to slow the spread of the toxin. Some people do actually have pretty severe allergic reactions to them, leading to asphyxiation and death. They also like to secrete a sticky liquid because their excessively short legs are bad at holding onto things. This means they end up stuck to gardeners' clothes, hair, and faces, you name it. Number four, tailless whip scorpion. These crazy looking creatures are basically scorpions on stilts. They look like a cross between a crab and a spider and have freakishly long legs and get up to huge sizes. There are many variations on this species of bug and the giant whip spider has the longest legs of all, which can grow up to a ridiculous 27 inches long. They have hilariously long arms with crab-like pinchers they use to feel their way around a room. In case you were wondering, these bugs are neither spiders or scorpions in spite of their respective name, although they are a form of arachnid. There are 155 different species of whip scorpion and they are one of the oldest known animals on earth, which may explain their freaky prehistoric appearance. They also like to shed their skin similar to snakes and hold their babies on their backs like other scorpions and spiders. Like crabs, they move sideways and scuttle quite close to the ground looking for prey. These guys have pretty big spikes on their arms, which they brandish aggressively if you get in their way. They only come out at night if you're looking to catch one, which you probably aren't. In spite of their freaky appearance, they do not actually harm humans. They are also very gentle with their chosen mates, who they like to affectionately stroke with their unsightly claws. In fact, there are even stories on the internet of people who have tried to tame them and experience the gentle caresses of the friendly whip scorpion for themselves. Still a no for me, dog. Number three, 
giant Japanese hornet. Japan is home to the Godzilla of wasps, the giant hornet. These giant bugs have a wingspan of up to three inches and have received the nickname murder hornets. These insects are bright orange, in case you couldn't spot them from their huge size. Their sting is deadly and can cause organ failure in grown adults. Other bees and wasps can only sting once before dying, but giant hornets can sting you as many times as they like should you get in their way. It's not unusual for unfortunate victims to get stung hundreds of times. The toxin they contain in their sting is powerful enough to eat away at human flesh, and for survivors, it often causes kidney problems later in life. In Japan, they like to nest in and around Mount Fuji in particular, and many walkers on their holidays have fallen afoul of a giant hornet nest. To many people's horror, they are extremely aggressive, and it's not unusual to see folks running at full speed away from swarms of them in Japan. These bugs like to nest underground, so unfortunately, you may step on a nest without realizing it. These guys look especially disturbing whilst hatching out of their honeycomb cocoons. They have recently migrated to North America, in case the US didn't have enough problems. Bizarrely, baby hornets are actually a delicacy in Japan, and the larva can be enjoyed fried or baked as a snack. Eat up, America! Number 2. The Create Notos Ganges Moth not everyone likes moths, but most of them are pretty innocent looking. The Create Notos Ganges, however, looks as if it was released from hell itself. This weird insect has four inflatable scent glands it shoots out of its butt when it wants to investigate things. These glands are covered in tiny vibrating hairs, which are also quite gross. Once fully inflated, their tube-like appendages are longer than the rest of their bodies, and they look a bit like devil's horns. The male's hairy tentacles pulse in order to release some sweet moth pheromones that they use to entice the females. When they want to go incognito, they look completely normal. Frightened, unsuspecting observers have described watching in horror as this tiny moth slowly has unfolded into an otherworldly demon. They are originally from Asia, but have started to move to Australia, scaring the life out of people who are unfamiliar with them. Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number 1. Goliath Bird-Eating Spider the Goliath bird-eating spider is the scariest tarantula in the world. This enormous spider weighs up to six pounds and can be almost a foot long. They are too big to hold in your hand. Not that you'd want to do that. They don't actually usually eat birds, although they can. The name was inspired by their huge size. Normally, they eat mice, snakes, and frogs, which is just as horrifying. They eat their prey by liquidating them from the inside and sucking their juices out. Fortunately, their venom is not harmful to humans. Their fangs are enormous, and they do occasionally bite people. More dangerous than their bite, are the hair they flick at people in self-defense. These incredibly fine fibers can get stuck under the skin and are exceedingly difficult to get out. Although they are normally just irritating, they can be very dangerous if they get into your eyes or around your mouth. One of the most unnerving things about these creatures is unlike other spiders, they make noise. They like to hiss at people when they feel threatened and are so loud that they can be heard from almost 15 feet away. A giant hissing spider? Mm, no thank you. In parts of South America, People actually catch and eat them. Reports suggest they taste a lot like crabs. Number 8. General Purpose Machine Gun Often deemed the world's deadliest machine gun, this weapon has been a staple of firearms in the British Army arsenal for the past 60 years, and it is still in use for a very good reason. It was first introduced after World War II as a replacement for Vickers heavy machine gun and Bren light machine gun. Its accuracy and reliability on the battlefield have made it irreplaceable in all three British armed services, on land, in the air, and at sea. Popularity of general purpose machine guns stems from the fact that they have been proven to be extremely functional and useful in all kinds of extreme conditions, from conflicts in dry deserts to warfare in the Arctic regions. Their relatively simple design, which includes their air-cooled, belt-fed, gas-operated architecture, and the fact that they are convenient for use, usually mounted on vehicles, helicopters, boats, and fixed locations, make them a go-to choice for combat. They are usually equipped with two quick-change spare barrels, where one can replace another when it becomes too hot. It's important to note that when mounted, this weapon requires two people to operate it, one to fire the gun and make adjustments, and the other to load the ammunition belts and change barrels. 
we should probably get into some more technical details. This weapon weighs 13.85 kilograms, including a 50 round belt of 7.62 rounds. Its rate of fire is 750 rounds per minute, and its muscle velocity is 838 meters a second. In its light roll, when carried by a dismounted soldier, it reaches 800 meters, and when mounted on a vehicle or boat, for example, its effective range grows to 1,800 meters. Details are important when it comes to this powerful killer beast of a weapon. Number seven, Chimera Virus. Bioweapons have been a hot button issue for decades now, with never ending moral dilemmas surrounding ethical questions with no clear answers. Biological weapons are extremely deadly, and even the most ardent warfare enthusiasts are reluctant to accept the possibility that there might never be cases in which they should be used which they shouldn't. Chimera virus is one such incredibly dangerous way of managing war situations which could prove to be deadly to millions. A chimera virus is defined by the Center for Veterinary Biology as a new hybrid microorganism that represents a product of joining nucleic acid fragments from two or more microorganisms in which at least two of the fragments contain essential genes necessary for replication. In the context of biological warfare, using chimera virus as a weapon implies creating a combination of two pathogenic viruses. This would then maximize lethality of the newly produced virus. This is the reason this kind of bio weapon has been considered and discussed for its potential use in warfare. One of the most prominent examples of this was the Soviet Union's Chimera Project, which was conceived as an attempt to combine DNA from Venezuelan equine encephalitis, smallpox, and Ebola virus back in the 1980s. Some other variations have been closely studied, such as the combination of monkeypox and the smallpox viruses. Biological warfare is extremely scary to think about. How would we protect ourselves? Hey, real quick, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button for more videos like these. Number six, Metal Storm. This brilliant weapon is an Australian-made US-funded cannon whose design is reminiscent of a Roman candle, firing round after round of its 36 barrels. This experimental piece could fire a reported million rounds per minute. Metal Storm is an innovative weapon platform that Metal Storm Inc. started developing back in the 1990s. What differentiates it from other machine guns is the fact that it has no moving parts, but is still capable of firing 180 rounds in less than 100 of a second. Its caseless 9mm ammunition is a guarantee that no armor would be able to stop it. There are some drawbacks to this impressive piece of technology, however. Although this killing machine can fire 1.62 rounds in a minute at traveling speeds approaching Mach 5, which makes it the perfect weapon every military force would gladly own, the application of its features remains an issue. Even though no tank would be protected from its deadly blows, that tank would have to be relatively close for Metal Storm to achieve it. On top of that, the target would need to stay directly in front of the weapon, whose quick firing would prevent it from effectively sweeping the battlefield. Moreover, this cannon is extremely heavy and would need a lot of preparation before it could be effectively used, and the expensive ammunition that could potentially go to waste isn't helping. Nonetheless, it looks pretty badass. Number 5. ANSEQ-3 Laser Weapon System ANSEQ-3 Laser Weapon System, also referred to as LAWS, is a U.S. Navy program designed to develop a directed energy weapon for maritime operations. The long-term objective of this ambitious weapon project is to create high-energy lasers across its surface fleet as a support system to existing hard-kill weapons. Essentially, it is a carefully devised system that would help the pre-existing Navy resources to defeat inexpensive threats such as small, unmanned aerial vehicles and fast inshore attack crafts by using the low-cost per-shot capability of lasers. This system uses advances in commercial technology to create an efficient platform for identifying, illuminating, tracking, and lacing enemy surface and air threats. Sounds fancy so far. There are many advantages of this technologically advanced weaponry system. It is lethal, precise, speed of light weapon whose numerous upsides have been frequently cited. However, there are certain limitations that should be taken into consideration. Firstly, handling this kind of technology would necessitate extensive training of warfighters who would be using it, which might be less than cost efficient when it comes to operating a laser-based high-tech weapon. Secondly, 
This admittedly ambitious piece of tech would have to fit into certain size and weight constraints in order to be operable. Thirdly, since AN SEQ3 laser weapon system is a fully electric laser, the operation of the system does not require handling and storage of hazardous materials such as hydrogen fluoride. In addition, its power level is not adequate to engage in certain threats such as cruise missiles and tactical ballistic missiles at tactically useful ranges. While there is considerable work to be done to produce a tactical system, System, demonstrations of this weapons program have shown that this tactical system can be achieved within reasonable cost, volume, weight, and power constraints. Number 4. Nimitz-class Aircraft Carrier A total of 10 nuclear-powered Nimitz-class aircraft carriers are considered the largest warships in the world, with each one of them designed for approximately 50 years of service life with one midlife refueling. They operate at a speed of 30 plus knots and carry a crew of 3,200 members. They have remained the centerpiece of the forces that are absolutely necessary for operating forward. The Nimitz class aircraft carrier serves several very important functions. First, it deters adversaries from striking against US interests. They are designed to provide support and operational power to aircrafts that engage in attacks on airborne, afloat, and ashore targets which threaten free use of the sea. Another important function of this aircraft carrier and its strike group is to engage in maritime security operations that provide interruption of threats to merchant shipping and prevent the use of seas for terrorism and piracy. They are also capable of providing necessary assistance in case of disasters and humanitarian goals. All in all, the Nimitz class aircraft carrier is an essential part of our defense forces and will likely remain that in the foreseeable future. Number 3. Hydrogen Bomb The hydrogen bomb is a type of nuclear bomb where, just like like with the atomic bomb, the explosive energy is derived from nuclear reactions. Where hydrogen bomb differs from an atomic bomb are the processes by which those reactions are achieved. Atomic bomb uses a process called fission by which the nucleus of an atom is broken down into smaller pieces, which results in the release of neutrons and lots of energy that create an atomic explosion. Hydrogen bomb, on the other hand, uses the process of fusion, by which the atomic nuclei are combined into bigger ones. A hydrogen bomb, also known as thermonuclear bomb, contains a fission weapon within it, but the activation of a hydrogen bomb itself is a two-stage process. It utilizes energy derived from the process of fission to fuel the subsequent fusion. Energy released from the fusion reaction is much greater than that from fission, about three to four times, which makes the hydrogen bomb much more powerful. The process of fusion that creates the hydrogen explosion happens between two hydrogen isotopes. The process of fusion that creates the hydrogenic explosion happens between two hydrogen isotopes, tritium and deuterium. This bomb is limited to the amount of hydrogen within it, which means that its power is directly dictated by its creator, which is a scary thought. The first hydrogen bombs were detonated by the US and the Marshall Islands in 1952 and 1954. In recent times, the supposed creation of the miniaturized hydrogen bomb in 2016 caused quite a stir, and the world became alerted and sensitized to the dangers of nuclear weapons. It is still unclear how many of these nuclear weapons and hydrogen bombs and its variants actually exist. Considering that many countries engaging in convert forms of warfare are keeping their weaponry, including nuclear, highly classified. Let's just hope we don't need to get acquainted with nuclear weapons and hydrogen bombs in real life and leave that to the edutainment videos like this one. Number 2. Project Thor Project Thor is a highly sophisticated weapon system that is currently under development by the U.S. Air Force that is considering its deployment. This non-nuclear space-based superweapon is supposed to deliver strikes to adversaries much more powerful than many types of chemical and nuclear attacks, all while avoiding the unfavorable fallout that would follow nuclear strikes. How is Project Thor even supposed to work? In a nutshell, it would include dropping telephone pole-sized tungsten rods from American satellites to strike hardened bunkers and underground nuclear complexes. Even though they won't be carrying warheads, they will strike at approximately 10 times the speed of sound, which would result in tremendous damage from the sheer speed of their impact. North Korea and Russia are thought to be the primary potential targets of these rods from the gods, as they are often called. Iran which has received assistance from Korea in hardening its own missile sites and nuclear facilities, would probably be considered as one of the primary targets too. The rods from Project Thor would most likely weigh around 10,000 kilograms and cost about $230 million each, 
several times the price of conventional and nuclear bunker busters. These kinds of deployments may start off an arms race from rival nations in space in order to retaliate. However, Project Thor is generally considered to be a worthwhile investment, considering that even with air bases taken out of service, these rods will be able to deliver strikes from altitudes of tens of thousands of kilometers. I just wish we could all collectively start investing this much in exploring space rather than exploring space weapons, but we can still hope. Number one, Zarbamba, October 30th. 1961 is the date when the largest and most powerful weapon was detonated and changed the world forever. The Tsar Bomba, which is our number one pick for this list. Tsar Bomba was developed as a result of a seemingly endless nuclear arms race following World War II. Mitishuka Bay on Severny Island in the Arctic Circle was selected as the testing ground for this incredibly powerful life annihilator. The Tsar Bomba was the outcome of the Soviet Union's determination to build ever larger and more deadly weaponry as opposed to Americans, who were, at the time, concentrating on producing small to medium-sized atomic devices. This terrifying bomb was 26 feet long, with almost 7 feet in diameter, and weighed almost 60,000 pounds. The device was delivered to the site by Tupolev 295, strategic bomber from an altitude of 34,000 feet. In order to secure a relatively safe departure of the bomber and its escort to at least 30 miles away from the site, the bomb itself was attached to a parachute that would slow its descent to detonation at 13,000 feet. The detonation was over 1,570 times more powerful than two bombs dropped over Hiroshima and Nagasaki combined. Its yield was 50 megatons. The mushroom cloud created by the bomb's detonation was 25 miles wide at its base and about 60 miles wide, and it penetrated the stratosphere at 40 miles high. Severe damage of its impact extended to 150 miles radius, which is enough to completely annihilate any modern large city, including suburbs. This device would have caused unimaginable damage had its original 100 megatons concept been pursued. But fortunately, the accompanying five mile wide fireball was repelled away from the surface by the force of its own shockwave and avoided contact with the earth, which reduced the amount of the fallout. Apparently, humanity hasn't been quite receptive to lessons from this detonation. Hopefully, it will in the very near future if we are to evolve and learn to live peacefully without the need for nuclear weapons. Fingers crossed for that one. Thanks for watching! What did you think of these powerful weapons? Let me know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye!